I live my dream for a short period of time, being a pro player. I gave my life for football. The, the thing about me is the moment I focus on something that I want to do, right, that's it, there's no turning back. Just like how I was in football, just like how I was in singing, the first person who actually tell me no, tell him I want to do this, no. Why? You're not good enough to do that. It's, it's for me to, to make them happy. I'm pretty sure they're still looking down on me and hopefully that, you know, I will never give up in my life. You know, for, for all the things that they give me, it's not just for myself, but it's also always for the people who's been around me all the time. Hi guys, I'm Sayed Azmi, I'm 37. I'm a professional soccer coach, actor and singer. My dad, uh, I remember that he, he bought me a Singapore JC verse. I said, you're going to wear this tomorrow because we're going to go watch the game. So it was the old Kalang Stadium, you know. And then we entered the stadium giving the tickets. And then, you know, you have to climb the staircase. First, you will see the stadium lights first. And then when you go in, and then you see the crowd, and then you see the feel, I was speechless. That was my first time being at a football match. And all you hear are all the uncles shouting, but then, the highlight was when they score and then the, the whole stadium roar and they did the Kalang wave. That was the most memorable for me because as a child, that just sets it that I want to be a professional soccer player when I grow up. Yeah. I signed a pro contract when I, signed, uh, when I was 19. I signed for three years and I only served one year and then I went to NS. After the season end, I was talking to a couple of clubs. They initially wanted to sign me, but I was contracted to Sembawang. Just before I go to NS, the club closed due to financial issues. So they had to close down. So which means my other two years in the contract burn up. And then after Sembawang closed down, I went to them. Even if they want to, they can't because I was going NS in December. So there's nothing much they can do for me. So I decided to go NS. I played for the SAF, uh, Salsa. And towards the end, I was six months before OAD, I started to worry about what am I supposed to do after NS. And then this guy, Amit Hussein from Beyond DDB in KL, he kind of called me and said that I'm the one doing Anugra Planet Music. I want you to be performing for the award show. So he offered me a contract to be with him in Malaysia, pursue my career in Malaysia. He's the first person who actually tell me no. Tell him I want to do this, no. Why? Not good enough to do that. But he's been truthful, so he's my go-to guy. Any advice I want, go to him. Any help I want, you see, was the one who took care of me. He's my dad, he's my mom, he's my brother, he's everything. One day, he called me and said, I need to go dinner with you and talk to you about something. So I thought it was just work. But then he said, I got something to tell you. He said, what? He said, I got cancer. I'm going to lay off from work a little bit. So your manager is going to take care of you from now on. Then that was, the, that was this time I was in Singapore and then he's like, I got a few tickets to go and watch Janet Jackson. You want to come with me? So we went. And I, like, I totally forgot about everything that he was going through. And then we went to Makan after that. And then we had a long conversation at Siglap. I don't know much about cancer until that was the first time I heard of a relapse. So the relapse was hard. That was when he actually gone really down. When he passed away, that was when I decided to not return to KL because I don't see a point, uh, a meaning to go back to KL because the person that I <clears throat> rely on gone in my life. You know. Um,
That was when I snapped out of it. And the, the person who helped me is also my family, of course, the support system. And I'm always thankful for. You know, he told me that you shouldn't, you have to bounce back from this, you know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Today I'm here at Palestine Khalsa, you know, also as an academy manager and also as the assisting the first team as well. So it's taken a full circle and um, I'm always thankful for the obstacles I face in my life for the support system that was given to me, for the friends that I have, and for the kid in me that never give up and always trying to working hard, not making failure a thing in his life. It's not just for myself, but it's also always for the people who's been around me all the time, you know? Failure is, doesn't exist in my vocabulary. <laughs>